So in the previous video I posed you a few questions relating to our composite functions topic. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to work you through the solutions and show you how we would approach a set of questions like this. So here's a quick refresher for you. What I said was for each of the pairs of functions below calculate f of g of x and g of f of x in its simplest form. So the first one was when I gave you f of x it was x squared plus 1 and g of x it was 1 over x plus 2. Second one was when f of x was x cubed minus 1 and g of x was 3x plus 1. And the third one, f of x was equal to 3x minus 7 and g of x was equal to cos x. So we introduced trig functions. So let's have a look at the three of these. So the first one, f of x equals x squared plus 1, g of x equals 1 over <coughs> x plus 2. Excuse me. So for one like this, f of g of x, we have to remember that what we're doing here is substituting in the g for wherever we have an f. The way to start this sort of one is to write it as f of g and then put in the form of g. So that would be what f of 1 over x plus 2. Because we, then we know that wherever we have an x in the original function, that is what we have to put in its place. So in this case, I would end up with 1 over x plus 2, all squared, plus 1. So I'd end up with something that looked like that, because wherever there's an x, so here, that's where I put the 1 plus, over x plus 2. Then it's a case of simplifying. So if I square this bracket, I get 1 over x plus 2 squared, because 1 squared is just 1, and then I've got a plus 1. Now this plus 1, I could, to put in one big fraction, I can write as x plus 2 squared over x plus 2 squared. So I get 1 over x plus 2 squared plus x plus 2 squared over x plus 2. Remember, common denominator means I can combine them, so I've got to write it like that to do it. And then it's just adding the whole lot together. So I get x plus 2 squared plus 1 over x plus 2 squared. And I could just leave it as that form. That's the simplest form right there. I've essentially put it in completed square form on the top and I've got this there. If it wanted you to multiply out the brackets on top, you could. But it could just be left like that. Now, quick point for you. See in the bottom how I've left it in its brackets factorised. This is what they want you to do when it's in its simplest form. This is how they want it left. So don't at this point multiply it out and write it as x squared plus 4x plus 4. Keep it in the bracket form. That actually also makes it much easier to cancel things out from the top and bottom later on if you're able to do that. Second one then was g of f of x. So start by writing it like that and then putting in the form of f of x. So we get g of x squared plus 1. So wherever there's an x in this case, we substitute x squared plus 1. So in this case, it's 1 over x squared plus 1 plus the 2 on the bottom. It's 1 over x plus 2. That's what it becomes. In this case, it's just a case of simplifying the bottom. And I get 1 over x squared plus 3. That's it. In its simplest form, job done. Sometimes they're much more straightforward and require less lines of working than the first part of the example. But they're both the same. We start by substituting in the form. And then it's a case of using our algebra skills things we've been working on since S1 and 2 to simplify it and work it out. Second example, I gave you f of x equal to x cubed minus 1 and g of x equals 3x plus 1. So start with f of g of x and again we start the same way. Write it as f of g of x and put in the form of g of x to begin. So that's f of 3x plus 1. I can then write it out in the functional form I want it. So wherever there's an x, I put 3x plus 1. So in this case, I get 3x plus 1 cubed take away 1. So one like this, what I can now do is multiply out the bracket and then simplify it. So if I multiply it 3x plus 1 cubed, what I end up getting is 27x cubed plus 27x squared plus 9x plus 1. That's the bracket. I've then got minus 1 after that. So I end up getting 27x cubed plus 27x squared plus 9x. The ones cancel. And at this point, I can maybe simplify it out by taking a common factor. I have 9x bracket 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 and just leave it in that form. Either of these two forms, though, they're the simplest form of it. I can then do g of f of x and take that one in the exact same way. So it's g of this. So in this case, it's g of x cubed minus 1. So substitute that into anywhere there, 
and at 3 bracket x cubed minus 1 plus 1, multiply the bracket, you get 3x squared minus 3 plus 1, so it's 3x squared, take away 2. That's my form for g of f of x. There you go, nice and straightforward for that one as well. And it doesn't actually add much to the level of complexity when we introduce trig functions. So the last example was f of x, it was 3x minus 7, and g of x, it was cos x. So in this case, f of g of x introduces the cos x to the whole thing. So it's f of cos x for this one. Which in this case, putting the cos x wherever the x is here, gives me 3 cos x take away 7. And funnily enough, that is actually its simplest form. We could just leave it like that as it is. We don't have to muck around at this point. Similarly with g of f of x. So we start with the same thing write it as g of f of x, and then put in the form. So g of 3x minus 7, and then substitute that in wherever there's an x here. So in this case, I get cos of 3x minus 7. And again, that's it in its simplest form. We can just leave it. Sometimes with these ones, it requires a very little set of work in, especially when the trig functions are introduced. Now later on, we'll look at some ways we can expand trig equations and wave functions, and that might come in handy then. But right now, this is what we need to worry about. So, here's hoping you did well on those ones. I'll see you in class for a bit more work and a bit of help.